Um, what is it? So, like, there's Lumaya Ignatenkov, who's still alive today, by the way. And then there's, um, Vasily Ignatenkov, who was, uh, one of the firemen who was, uh, called to the roof. But I think one of the eeriest touches, because they can really get your hearse thing on end, was it's, it's a completely unedited, from the historical archive, not touched in any way. They replay 30 seconds from the 911 call from that night. And, uh, you know, like, dude, you, you hear this woman who's, like, the dispatcher, and from what I can gather, she can see the fire from a distance, and she, so and she sounds utterly horrified, and, again, it's completely real. Um, um, oh, but it also on. highlights one of the, but it highlights one of the problems, because you can feel a sense of impending doom. Because they're like, oh yeah, no, there's just a roof fire between three, blocks four, three and four. Because she was told it was a roof fire. And then you know, and you know, Doom is coming because, uh, like, you see the time, and it's eerie in episode one, you see the, a timer tick down to, um, or ticking up, showing what happened at every moment of every second. So you see, like, one of the injured crewmen, and then they leave his perspective for a bit to see the fire department rushing in, even though they're kind of already fucked just for getting out of the truck. Ah, oh, that that show is so good. It it definitely earned its right as the highest rated show. What the fuck? What's going? Oh Jesus! A fucking saw comes out of nowhere. <laughs> what the fuck? Boss battle what is this? Unavoidable your reaction. Move. Goldie, your reaction. Holy shit! No, dude. Like this is a freak show of a fight. Whoa. Yeah, it just happened right now. Oh. <laughs> it's a freak okay, show of fight. You're okay. Uh, God damn. Me and Norb menu. He's fine, he sounds fine. You know, he's just taking a really intense shit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we are very mature. Dude, I laugh at fart jokes on YouTube, okay? I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, here it comes again! No! Damn it! I'm gonna just- I, I want to get that quote, like, made into a motivational poster. Dude, I laugh no! at fart oh. jokes on YouTube. You're fine. <laughs> By the way, somebody clip that saw clip. <laughs> Please do. Fuck! It just comes right the dick out of nowhere. Shit, I what movie is this? What movie? What movie? Uh, what? Movie? Oh, they have a conversation. Uh, Nelson, you beautiful bastard, thank you. Oh. Uh. <sighs> Why does your jerkin who's flying around that do anything? YES! <laughs> Fuck you! Mm. <sighs> oh! Okay, um, so who wants pizza? I would Me. love pizza. <laughs> Lucy is eating a calzone, I think. Oh, never mind. Quesadilla. She has a quesadilla, which is she essentially has just the... No, no, that's just the Mexican version of a calzone, let's be real. Well, Tex-Mex, because apparently quesadillas were Tex-Mex. Have you guys ever heard the story about why uh, uh, there's a meme called "Do we"? There's a Russian meme called "Do we have to send Ivan again?" I've kind of heard of that, yeah. I've heard of that one too. I don't know about it though. It's based it, no. It's based on something that actually happened in history. Do you know that? Yes. Nope. Rob Robin knows. Okay. Robin, I know you already know, but I'm going to tell the story. No, so. Go for it, man. Uh. Rewind time back to the Soviet, back to the days of the later days of the Soviet Union. Um, so, a Muslim extremist group seizes control of a Soviet embassy, 
And just to show that they're being really, really serious with their demands... Oh, Harrison Ford. Um, <laughs> just to show they're being really serious with their demands, uh, they uh, kill one of the Soviet em workers in the, in the embassy. I like that so the you little dragon talks. He's so adorable. I would love to have him Cute. as a pet. <laughs> Cute. Um, so what ends up happening next is the Soviets don't decide to capitulate. Instead, they found out everyone who was raiding their embassy. They figured out where they lived. And next time they did an exchange, the Soviets did not send say a word. They just slipped in a box for each one of the uh, uh, people raiding the embassy. Contain they opened the box and then immediately abandoned their mission and ran away. Um, and it turned out what happened was the KGB found out who their families were, butchered them all into pieces, put them in the box, and they sent the box and they gave them essentially a box full of the dismembered body parts of their family. And for that reason, they have never messed with Ivan again. Hi, Solar Flare. Crap, Hello, Crap. brothers. Hey, Solar Hello. Flare walked in right after they butchered their families. <laughs> what? Well, I mean, yeah, I, well, I mean that Aeon, was the end of his night shift. <laughs> yeah, Aeon, Aeon was talking about, uh, you know, butchering families, and then, but then Solar Flare has, has arrived. Solar Brother. Yes. Whenever you get yeah! that's the fifth cold Woo! one. Woo! We've had yeah, a lot of cold ones up, but you know what? I'll be back in just a second. And we're about to have five. We're about to get no, we're about to get six. But solar, solar. What? Tell me when your bro gets back so I can drive to you and take you to the place to get the poop. Yes. <laughs> There's still unfortunately no luck. Oh. Okay, People so can, especially pet. considering that I defeated that bizarre boss. Bizarre. Woo! Yeah, we're now on five. <laughs> Are we on five? I thought we were on six. I don't know I, how to count. Well, I'm now was... going to uh, give everybody additional ASMR. Behold. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Cracking open off cold ones with the boys. The I just and want pouring one with the, the boys. I just want everyone in the Twitch chat to be aware half of the call just not into the sound of pouring. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good sound right there. You should have recorded that one. Well, it's been caught on the stream, so. Yeah. But isolation and stuff. It's very nice. Yeah, it's ASMR. It's just, there, there are a few sounds that are as satisfying as just pouring out a carbonated beverage over ice and just listening to it bubble. Yes. I'm running out of my cold one. I just bought one. We're cracking open cold ones with the boys. We're drinking cold ones with the boys. We're eating with the boys. We're, you know, emotionally sharing our feelings with the boys. We're listening to Golden Lunders in his fucking mind to a buzzsaw with the boys. So much with the boys! <laughs> the boys. The, with the, the boys, boys are a covenant. The boys are back in town. Play it! Play it with the boys! <laughs> the boys are back in town. <sighs> Delicious. Fucking delicious. Finally, some some good fucking news. We're emotionally supporting with the boys. We're emotionally validating the boys. We have achieved valid. What does this do? A gaudy hat that obscures the face of a semi-transparent advisor. All right. What does this do? Probably something to do with time knowing this game. Is it your is it in your orb menu? Yeah, it was. <laughs> and I'm I'm like legit about that. Yeah, I know. You guys seen the Amazon series called The Boys? Yeah, it's okay. Are back in town? I'm okay. I'm a little bit bitter about the boys, the Amazon show. 
because they canceled the tick, which was way better. I liked the tick way too much. It was really, it was fun. It was optimistic. It was Kenny Arkin Pony. Thank you for hosting. I remember the tick. Yeah. My Ow. favorite episode was when they discovered the speed of lint. Yeah. The speed of lint? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I will explain this to you exactly the same way that the characters that came up with this concept explained it to the tick. <laughs> when you take your pants out of a washing machine and the dryer and you check your pockets, what do you find? I'm not answering it. Uh, <laughs> The answer is lint. And do you know how it gets there? How? It's that fast! <laughs> okay. Man, I love the tick. I, every version of the tick is good. Like, there's... That's... You know how superheroes is like, one bad thing? Like, there's nothing bad with the tick. The comics are great, the animated series is great, and both live-action shows are great. I think the one thing he paid for it was lack of... Uh, mainstream recognition, let's be real. Yeah. But, like, that's, the, that's the Amazon Tick show thing. looked so good. It didn't get recognized. Yeah. I'm not. I'm still a little bitter about it getting cancelled last year. Because, like, that show was so good and so funny. You know, what's, you know what's really, like, what I find interesting about comics is that the guy regarded as, like, the best writer of comics actually hates comics. Alan Moore? Yeah. Okay, but to be fair, Alan Moore hates everything. Like, I don't I mean, think there's sure. anything Alan Moore likes. You, know, you never but hear do... Alan Moore likes something. Well, no, but there's another thing, too, is that, like, do you want to know why he even wrote Watchmen? Because he really wanted to write a story with the Charlton characters. No, it's, uh, the main reason he wrote it, um, from a writer's perspective, <laughs> was that he noticed that with superheroes, it's really just the same story over and over again. So he said, okay, I'm sick of this. I'm going to write the final story. It's the, as in the final story, the apex of where the superhero idea can go, so that the genre is, fun. and in his eyes, the genre would be not popularly dead, but but from a writing perspective, dead. Because at that point, it, like everything you could have done with the idea would have been done with that. So he literally wrote the apex story to do it. But you have to admit, that's a pretty big fucking flex, and it's even more impressive that he pulled it off too. Yeah. But yeah, um, Alan Moore is Alan Moore is a very grumpy man. He is. He looks like an angry cat. Like <laughs> any, I've never heard of a time when Alan Moore was just like, "Wow, that was a really decent thing." Like, no, you do Alan to... Moore is only in the news because he doesn't like something. He only talks when he doesn't like something. No, no. no but what I find really interesting though is that like he does have a right to like hate the movie adaptations of his works though because. <laughs> Yeah. They're, they're so, like, dumbed-down versions of what he tried to write. Like, he notices infamously in... Well, kind of. Like, some directors actually did try and do interesting things with his idea, especially when adapting it to a movie. Um, like, because even Wisecrack credited uh, the director... I think it was, like... Was it Zack Schneider who was the director? Yeah, watching with yeah, Zack Schneider. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um... He, he did praise him for doing some clever things or clever updates that were cool to the story. But there was also, uh, like, say, V for Vendetta, which might seem kind of okay as a movie, but I have to agree with Wisecrack and even Alan Moore himself, is that it's just a one-dimensional... It's just a one-dimensional adaptation of a three-dimensional story. Yeah. I think that my favorite... One of my favorite Alan Moore, Zack Snyder things is that I've done a lot of research on Zack Snyder for stuff like Batman vs. Superman stuff. And, and Zack Snyder, one time, when he was asked, like, so Alan Moore doesn't like any adaptation of his work. What do you... What is, like, the best outcome? He's like, you know, I think the best outcome for, you know, Watchmen for him is, you know, maybe one day at uh, on a Sunday or whatever, he sits down, he watches, he thinks, oh, that wasn't that bad. Wait a second, like a double was, jump? And Alan Moore just said, like, no, I will not fucking disgrace my DVD player with your with your filth. It's like, Jesus, man. He was giving you an out to not say anything. <laughs> like, he's apparently seen it, and he's like, eh. He didn't care too much on that one. It's like, I don't think Watchmen is a great movie. 
the movie version is not that great. I think the HBO show is fucking amazing. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Alan Moore is just sometimes, dude, calm down. I mean, but you do have to admit, even if he does talk down about comics with, like, a, a sneeriness, what kind of makes him interesting is that, in a weird way, he can totally get away with it because he did demonstrate that he can literally write what is regarded by many as the best comic, or the best uh, superhero comic. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, he, it's almost like he displays how dismissive he is to it by easily writing the most innovative story for the genre just to prove that he can dismiss it because he can act... He, because he's the only innovator of it since its inception. That's a flex. It is that's a, an interesting it is a flex. flex that's right. a flex. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> okay. God damn it. Um, okay. Like, uh, for instance... The chat is currently debating about uh, pies and cookies. Thanks, nice. chat. Wow. Um... <laughs> No, um, like, uh, Let's see what's over here. for, uh, I know for V for Vendetta it was kind of different, and Alan Moore's criticism of the movie does have a legitimate God point, is that the movie is kind of like a kitty one-dimensional, like, if you got a, if you got a friend who's into, like, revolutionary politics, how they one, they can really only understand things one-dimensionally, and there seems to be a critical disconnect. Alan Moore, is, Alan Moore said that that is a one-dimensional movie for one-dimensional people. To a point, he's right, because they did reduce... They seem to have childishly reduced all the complexities, dangers, and dramatic hard-hitting points of the comic, and seem to have written them out of the movie entirely, just to make it a one-dimensional black-and-white story. And at that point, I'm like, you know what? Even I'm insulted by that concept. Yeah. Because <sighs> you can keep that concept stuff in the movie and the changes they made to it just made it into a generic story and as Alan Moore put it you've taken the you've taken all the teeth out of my story and to and he is correct like the comic is way impossibly better than the movie for me yeah, for Vendetta yeah, absolutely I think one and of my favorite one of the other, like one of, other yeah. you go okay uh, but like one of my favorite things was about how um, because Alan Moore wanted, he was telling a story about fascism, but the version in Hollywood is like something your average Antifa person believes. It's like some one-dimensional, it's one-dimensional bullshit that doesn't actually understand it. So Alan Moore tried to fix that by writing V for Vendetta, talking about how such a thing actually arises and how scarily human the reasons can be. And that's, that's a story worth telling, because most people today don't even get what it is, and that's kind of horrifying. Um, yeah. But, like, the but it also contrasted certain other things. Like, one of the best uh, visual cues in the comic was... Um, you'll see facial cues where people are thinking like other characters. So, like, one of the leaders of, like, the Norse Fire Party... He has, like, this creepy smile that completely matches V's. Just to show, like, in a visual way to show that they're not so different philosophically. But it, but not in like an angry preachy way. It was like an expertly done thing, and it's such an eerie like thing to look at. And it delivers, and it delivers that message to you with just a picture of a man smiling. Like that. That's really good depth and really good visual storytelling. The movie completely nixed that entirely. Yeah. Including the fact that V himself is a, like you, you get the idea that okay he's a bomber unstable sure, but like he had like more human instabilities where. But he still talked about, like, the worship and focus on symbols. The movie completely neutered him of most of, it, of, most of his greater complexity. Hang on. Did I miss something over here? Sorry, I went on a rant about V. No, it's okay. <laughs> oh, you're good, you're good. Understandable.